Lewis Hamilton will be a Ferrari driver for 2025. Even as I say it now, it just doesn't feel real. It doesn't actually feel like it's actually going to happen. But yes, what an absolutely insane couple of days in Formula 1. Now, apologies that this video is not coming out when everyone else put their videos and when this news was announced. Uh, unfortunately for me, this news could not have come at a worse time because uh, not only was I right in the middle of editing a really big video which I put out yesterday, but also as this news was coming out, I was also picking up the keys to my first ever apartment, which uh, which obviously is uh, very exciting, but it did mean that I was kind of busy for, for a few days. So yes, Lewis could not have chose a worse time uh, to put this all out. So I want to say actually a really big thank you um to everyone that reached out on Instagram and Twitter basically asking me over the weekend, Aldas, when are you going to do a video about Lewis and Ferrari? Aldas, when are you going to talk about Lewis and Ferrari? So yeah, again, I tried to get back to you as many of you as possible, uh, but here we are finally talking about Lewis to Ferrari in 2025. And I mean, my first reaction was almost disbelief. Like it's one of those rumors that uh, I think we've heard for the past five years, every single year, every single, every single time Lewis's contract kind of comes you know, towards an end or maybe has one year on it, we always hear these, you know, Lewis to Ferrari rumors, but finally it is happening. Now, yeah, I mean, firstly, what an absolute bombshell. In my lifetime, I can't talk about, you know, anything uh, in, you know, before I was born, but in my lifetime of watching Formula One, I have never, ever seen a bigger move in Formula One. This was absolutely massive. And just, do you know what's really strange actually for me, apart from the Formula One side, is just the engagement, the frenzy, the media and everything, you know, uh, the, the views, the likes, the clicks and it, just everything to do with kind of this side of being a Formula One fan on social media. I have never seen this much kind of, again, engagement for, for anything in Formula One. I think um, someone pointed out that you know, the uh, the post that Formula One did announcing Lewis to Ferrari uh, got way more likes than, for example, when Max Verstappen uh, was, you know, securing his uh, third world championship. And th that's not a shot to Max, but just, you know, that's a massive thing during a Formula One season for a champion uh, to, you know, secure a world title. But this move has trumped absolutely anything uh, that has happened in Formula One in terms of engagement, in terms of fans, you know, wanting content, wanting that media, reading articles, things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's just incredible. I think it, it's kind of it's kind of given a bit of life back into Formula 1 after a bit of a boring season, a bit of a boring couple of years in my opinion. So yeah, it just shows that in this sport, um, anything can and usually does happen. I think it also just shows that, you know, when it comes to Lewis, whether you love him or you hate him, and obviously there's loads of people on both sides, he is the biggest driver in Formula 1. He is the absolute superstar of all superstars uh, in Formula 1. When he makes a move like this, you know, we've seen drivers go to Ferrari before. It's not, you know, Carlos Sainz obviously was announced as a Ferrari driver uh, back in 2020. But, you know, the combination, I think more, you know, don't, don't get me wrong, the fact that it is Ferrari is massive. But the fact that it's Lewis is why... Uh, this absolute frenzy uh, has happened. So again, this is undoubtedly, in my opinion, the biggest driver transfer in Formula 1 history. I wouldn't say that it's Whilst I do think that it's the biggest transfer in F1 history, I don't think that I don't think that it's the most shocking. For example, so in terms of the shock factor, I still think that uh, Lewis's move from McLaren to Mercedes uh, was a more shocking move. But because you know it's not completely out of the question, uh, you know, a a as it kind of things stand right now, uh, for Lewis to go to Ferrari, you know, it could have been on the cards, especially with Mercedes not being as good. So again, I don't think it's like the most shocking thing ever because you know it's always been on the cards for the past kind of you know five or so years. But certainly in terms of the impact, yeah, this is probably the biggest Formula 1 move ever, in my opinion. So getting my initial reaction out of the way, I have got a bunch of notes here and I'm going to try and cover a bunch of topics because I did have in mind to do, you know, maybe two, three, four videos, but, you know, and I'll probably, I will talk about this, you know, in, in kind of more videos because there is so much to discuss, but yeah, in this video, I wanted to try and kind of uh, rattle off as many topics and as many kind of knock-on effects because this move affects pretty much... I would say 80 to 90% of the other teams, you know, even down to Williams, as we're going to, you know, as we're going to talk about a little bit later on, it, you know, this move of Lewis going to Ferrari for next year is, is going to have knock-on effects. So yeah, it just shows you how one move, you know, can start a chain, you know, that, that domino effect. So yeah, it's, a, it's an absolutely massive move. But first of all, let's talk about the, the big question. Why does Lewis want to go to Ferrari? Why now? And what is it that drew him uh, to uh, the prancing horse? Now, I think it's been widely 
you know, Lewis has said himself, he's always wanted to drive in red. He's always wanted to race a Ferrari. Clearly, uh, that Cavallino and that Prancing Horse is still very, very special. It still has that power, doesn't it? Uh, that draw factor. I know the luster of Ferrari has kind of, you know, maybe been a little bit just, you know, sanded off uh, for the past kind of few years because they haven't really won a championship, you know, a driver's title since 2007 and a constructor's title since uh, 2008. So, you know, it, for sure, it doesn't perhaps have the same appeal as it did back then, but it's still Ferrari, isn't it? And for Lewis, clearly, it was something that, you know, he did, ha you know, he did want to do. I think the fact that it never happened before was just down to circumstance. Mercedes was always on the up and, you know, Ferrari was never even really close to Mercedes when it could have been a possibility in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. But now, obviously, with them being so close and with Red Bull being so far out, I think one thing for Lewis that goes into this move is that even if it doesn't, you know, even if it doesn't work out and, you know, he doesn't win a championship there, it doesn't feel like it could be a disaster, for example, because Ferrari should be competitive, you know, relatively speaking, there should be podium contenders and maybe race winners at the very least for the kind of next, you know, two or three years. And of course, that's the deal that he has signed. You know, he has signed a two year deal for 2025 and then 2026, along with a kind of a one year option uh, for 2027. And I think that might be on the team side or Lewis's side. So, uh, you know, the fact that it's kind of a short contract, I think Think, you know makes sense for Lewis given that he's going to be 40 years old you know when he steps into that when he steps into that Ferrari in uh, 2025 so yeah it kind of works uh, for both sides I think it's also worth mentioning uh, something that Toto mentioned recently because uh, the one thing that we do know is that this was a surprise to Mercedes whilst whilst Lewis's contract the one that he signed until 2025 with Mercedes it was always a short-term contract this was a big surprise to Mercedes you know we, we've heard stories now that basically on Thursday night everyone at the factory was kind of you know everyone got together and was kind of told and Toto Wolf was not at the factory he had to video call in uh, because I think he was on holiday or something so that tells us that this was a surprise for Mercedes you know he got no indication that Lewis uh, was wanting to, to leave so clearly there has been some kind of disconnect or something that has made Lewis if it, if it was a 50-50 move uh, but you know before the winter break you know with that Ferrari contract on the table and you know the future of Mercedes and staying there for the rest of his career clearly something over the winter break whether it is the simulator se sessions in the W15 whether it's something you know to do with the management a little falling out whatever it is or just the fact that Lewis just wants a new challenge something tipped it over in the favor of Ferrari and clearly uh, he decided to pull the trigger so yeah Mercedes didn't see it coming but you know it, it caused a bit of a scramble I think for Toto Wolf but yeah it's it seems like it's ended amicably I think uh, I think that's the right and, and it should you know the the success that Lewis has had with Mercedes has been unprecedented more wins more pole positions and more championships than any other driver team combination uh so it is you know it's a pretty, pretty high bar to beat for you know for even like some max verstappen and red bull so yeah i think there's never going to be and toto said himself there's never going to be any hard feelings um and actually that's why one of the reasons why this move was on the table for lewis is the fact that uh, mercedes didn't want to give Lewis a long-term contract. You know, both Lewis and Toto agreed that a long-term contract wasn't the right way to go because of his age and potentially, you know, some stuff that he might want to do in the future, which obviously turned out to be this Ferrari move. So it opened up the door for a move like this uh, in 2025. And of course, the strange thing now is that we have got an entire season of Formula One to wait for this amazing season. I mean, think about how many moves there are going to be uh, between now and the start of the 2025 season. And so I don't know about any anyone else, but I do really wish that we could just skip straight to the 2025 season so yeah that's going to obviously introduce kind of the interesting perspective of Lewis still being at Mercedes for this year and uh, I mean obviously everyone's talked about it uh, imagine if Mercedes build a, an amazing car uh, you know they're obviously going into a different direction and again was Lewis perhaps happy or not happy in the simulator uh, you know when he, uh, when he when he got into uh, the virtual version uh, of this brand new Mercedes how much did it you know that play in his mind a little bit as well you know there's no doubt that just because he hasn't driven the W15 on track the simulator is not the reason why Lewis has gone to Ferrari. I think there's, it's a bunch of things, isn't it? It's never going to be just one reason. Perhaps, you know, perhaps he's seen some of the staff also leaving Mercedes uh, and going to, you know, teams like Ferrari, like Aston Martin, like McLaren. And he just sees Mercedes as not quite having the grasp uh, on these uh, reg set of, of these regulations uh, as they did on the previous ones. Because I think, you know, even though they're talking about bringing a brand new car, Last year, I think what was quite worrying is that even though their car was still good and they still finished, you know, second in the constructors, which, you know, Lewis was a massive part of, the team didn't really know why their car worked on some circuits and didn't work on the others. And that lack of knowledge and lack of understanding, that's not just going to go away just because they're going to bring a brand new chassis and a brand new car. So I think all of these little factors kind of, you know, obviously weighed up uh, into Lewis's head. And then I'm sure, you know, Fred Vasseur, who... Uh, 
Uh, him and Lewis obviously have a big relationship. Obviously, they uh, raced together and obviously he was the team uh, principal and team manager at the time uh, in Formula 2 and Formula 3 or, you know, the equivalents when uh, Lewis was racing uh, in the mid 2000s. So there's that pre-existing relationship. And I think, again, all of these factors and the fact that Lewis wanted that new challenge, I think it just tipped it in the scales of Ferrari. But it is a big blow to Mercedes and a big kind of, um, I think I've heard some people describe it as a gut punch uh, to Mercedes and kind of the confidence that Lewis has in them. But again, you know, he's had so much success. And let's not forget, by the way, because I saw some people claiming that, you know, Lewis lacks loyalty or something because of this move. But to me, that's a ridiculous comment to make because let's not forget Lewis has been with Mercedes since 2013. He has been with Mercedes for over a decade. And so he, he's actually been at Mercedes, I think, for longer than uh, Leclerc has been at Ferrari and Lando has been at McLaren combined. Or, you know, must, it must be quite close. So, you know, when you're, at, and when you're at any job for over 10 years, I think it's only natural that, you know, as much as he might, might have wanted to be there for the rest of his career, you do get a little bit kind of excited about going, you know, and chasing new opportunities elsewhere. So, yeah, I think this move is totally understandable. And I think, again, not only is it potentially because Lewis wants to go to Ferrari and that pull is still very strong, but also it is a lack of confidence in Mercedes, which, yeah, doesn't, uh, it doesn't paint the team in a very good light going into 2024. And now, whilst there's no doubt that this move doesn't exactly make Mercedes look good, what does it say about Ferrari? Because outside of all of the commercial things that, you know, they'll be able to offer Lewis, and obviously Lewis is a massive brand by himself. I mean, the amount of money that he generated for Mercedes, you know, think of all of the sponsorship that Ferrari could get through that. So there's no doubt that the star power that, you know, we have seen through this, you know, there was talk about the stock market and the share price of Ferrari exploding. They did obviously, you know, release their quarterly, I think, uh, their, their profits. But the, the, the announcement of Lewis to Ferrari just shot up uh, the share price of Ferrari, which I'm sure had an impact. So all of these things matter, you know, all of these things matter to these massive conglomerate companies. But outside of the money that they could give him and obviously they're going to make and that he's going to make uh, for Ferrari, the performance of the car, I think, is also going to be massive because, again, it is a bit of a toss up. I think the interesting thing about Ferrari is that, you know, in terms of what Lewis gives to Ferrari, I don't think that at Ferrari for the past, let's say, 15 years, that they've had a driver problem, that their drivers haven't been good enough to win world championships. I mean, let's just look at it, you know, Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, Charles Leclerc. It's just, you know, the list just keeps going on and on and on. And now Lewis Hamilton as well. All of those drivers that I mentioned are top quality drivers. And I mean, I know that Leclerc isn't a world champion yet, but... You know, we saw at the beginning of 2022 when Ferrari did have a championship level car for like a third of the season, he was able to go toe to toe with Max Verstappen. So, you know, I'm not saying that Leclerc is a better driver or as good as Max, but Charles Leclerc is good enough to win a championship and good enough in a team that, you know, isn't having a mass amount of problems and isn't putting him under more pressure than Max is uh, at pushing Max for and Red Bull for a world title. So drivers have never been the problem and just you know, just putting Lewis Hamilton into this team is not gonna, you know, it's not gonna make them world champions. But, you know, what has been their bigger problem, I think, over the past kind of 15 or so years has been their lack of development over the course of the season, operational mistakes, reliability, and also the drivability of their car as well, because especially as of recent, They've had this really weird phenomenon where they're really amazing in qualifying and, you know, quite close to Red Bull even last season. But then over the course of the race, their car just drops off a cliff, you know, relatively speaking, uh, compared to the Red Bull. And again, Lewis coming into the team isn't going to change all of that, you know, at least certainly not overnight. So definitely Lewis must have seen something that, you know, kind of makes him think again, whether it's, you know, Fred Vasseur and the upward trajectory of Ferrari last year. Let's not forget, they really ended last year very, very strong. So I'm sure they're going to have a lot of hope uh, coming into this season. You know, all of those things combined, I think, uh, has given Lewis that confidence that Ferrari for 2025 and more importantly, 2026 and the brand new generation of cars or the, you know, the new, maybe not brand new generation, but the next uh, regulation of cars, Ferrari is going to be the right place to be, especially with the, uh, with massively uh, changing rules for the power unit. So, yeah, I think that's uh, kind of more than anything, you know, Lewis doesn't kind of instantly make them, uh, you know, title contenders, but he definitely kind of, you know, Ferrari now have the strongest driver lineup in Formula 1. There is absolutely no doubt about that. The, the combination of Hamilton and Leclerc is absolutely incredible. And I made the point on Twitter, I mean, depending how Leclerc's future kind of pans out and what, you know, his achievements in Formula 1 go on to be, because obviously he still, you know, isn't a world champion, 
there is going to be a discussion that Hamilton and Leclerc might be the greatest driver lineup in Formula One history. Again, Leclerc needs to go and have his career. We need to kind of judge it at the end of his career because, you know, when you talk about the likes of Senna and Prost, you know, versus Hamilton and Leclerc, it's obviously difficult to make that comparison now. But yeah, I, I just said that it's going to be in the conversation because these two drivers are two of the best drivers on the grid. And I mean, what, what's amazing uh, about this move, um, another kind of a crazy thing about it is obviously... Lewis stepping into Leclerc's team, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, it also paints a little bit of a different picture about the rumors that we heard last year of potentially Lewis going to Red Bull. I mean, I know that kind of Horner, you know, kind of in, you know, kind of mentioned it a little bit. Lewis kind of brushed it off and said that it didn't happen. But, you know, you, you always have to take uh, what drivers say with a pinch of salt. But I do think that it shows that clearly Lewis was... He wasn't worried about sounding out other teams, just making sure that he knows what all of the pieces are on the chessboard uh, before he starts playing, you know, knows that kind of the lay of the land uh, before he started to negotiate with Ferrari. But, you know, the fact that Lewis was kind of opening up kind of talks or at least, you know, sounding out uh, a potential move to Red Bull alongside Max Verstappen and then actually did go up against uh, or will go up against uh, Charles Leclerc at Ferrari. It's just, it's just incredible, you know, when you consider that Lewis just said, yeah, I don't really care who's in the other team. If I want to be there, I am going to go there. But yeah, you know, in the end, again, Red Bull, you know, wasn't really a possibility. I know that Horner definitely did not want Hamilton at Red Bull. The dynamic just wouldn't have worked uh, between him and Max anyway. But yeah, I think it's just the fact that Lewis is stepping into Leclerc's team is very, very significant. Now, when I mentioned that actually, um, you know, that this, you know, that Ferrari is Leclerc's team, there was, there was a little bit of pushback uh, on Twitter actually about to that statement. And to me, the fact that Charles Leclerc it has been given a rumored, you know, driver contract until 2029, and the team wasn't even like even willing to offer to give uh, Carlos Sainz a three-year deal, despite the fact that Leclerc and Sainz over the past three years have been the closest driver pairing on the grid, that should tell you whose team this is. This is Charles Leclerc's team. He is the future of this team. He is the one that he's he is the one that has been given uh, you know the longest contract in Formula One until 2029, and so that makes it Leclerc's team. There is no doubt about that. Uh, and the fact that you know, and the fact that Hamilton is not scared at all to go into this team, go up against Leclerc is uh, is just going to be box office, isn't it? I mean. This is the type of driver, uh, you know, this is the type of driver transfer, oh, sorry, this is the type of uh, driver lineup that you just dream of as a fan. Two of the best drivers on the grid in the same car. It's going to be absolute box office. In terms of who's going to come out on top, honestly, I have absolutely no idea because Charles Leclerc to me is the fastest driver over one lap. I think I've said that consistently over the past three years, but over a Sunday, over a race distance, Lewis Hamilton's IQ, tire management, just the way he can see the race and the way he manages a race as well, uh, that risk versus reward as well. He has learned all of that in his battles for world championships. And so how that's going to compare against Leclerc's raw speed right now in qualifying. And Leclerc is also a really good race driver as well, but there's no doubt that he's not quite Lewis Hamilton yet. So how much is Leclerc going to be able to learn and perhaps be even better than Lewis? Is Lewis going to step in and be better than Leclerc straight away? Or is it going to be, you know, perhaps gradual, you know, over the course of 25 and into 26? I mean, I'm just I'm just daydreaming right now. This is just incredible. So yeah, there is just so much exciting things about this move. Not the fact, not just the fact that it's Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari, but who he is going up against. So I don't think that there's going to be a massive problem in terms of who's the number one driver, you know, who's the number two, because when you bring in Lewis Hamilton, although it is harsh on Carlos Sainz, you know, Lewis Hamilton is, is no one's number two. He's never been anyone's number two since the first that he stepped into Formula One up against Fernando Alonso as a rookie at McLaren. So yeah, and both of them have, I think, very good characters and very good personalities that I do know that they do get along. We see them, you know, Lewis and Charles on social media all the time. So I think the dynamic should be quite good. Even if it does get very competitive and Ferrari are challenging for titles, I don't see it as a Rosberg and Hamilton kind of partnership or, you know, certainly that toxicity within the team because I think Lewis at the time was in a different phase of his career. He was a very different person as well. And obviously there was a lot of history even before they got to Mercedes uh, between Lewis and Nico. So yeah, I think Lewis is much more matured and Charles is also a much kind of... Uh, he's a much chiller character, much more level-headed. He never plays games or political games within the team. He's never really had problems with any of his teammates, to be honest. I mean, you know, whether it's Ericsson, Vettel or Sainz or whoever. So, yeah, I think I, I just think there's so much to like about this combination. And again, as far as who's going to come out on top, you know, what's quite interesting is that 
This move is very much very similar to when Lewis went to Mercedes in 2013 and the fact that 2015, uh, like 2013 was, is going to be the final year of these set of regulations. So yeah, it, will that perhaps give Charles a bit of a, you know, a, perhaps a bit of an advantage when Lewis first comes in and has to learn, you know, perhaps more culturally being at Ferrari, perhaps to try and learn the language a little bit as well. I know everyone at Ferrari speaks English anyway, you know, all of the engineers, but you do want to kind of uh, assimilate into your team. So yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a, a, a bit, I'm sure there's going to be a bit of a bedding in period for Lewis and how much of that is going to give Charles, you know, the step up that he already knows the team, already knows the car. And then what is it going to be like in 2026, uh, just like it was in 2014, when we have this kind of new uh, re new regulation of cars where perhaps the both of the drives will be more on equal footing. So all of these questions at Ferrari and, you know, how Fred Vasseur is going to manage, you know, his relationship with Leclerc and relationship or past relationship uh, with Hamilton as well. All of these questions just make it even more exciting and make me just, they make me want the 2025 season to be right now. So yeah, unfortunately we can't skip uh, the 2024 season and certainly if if Mercedes have a better car in 2024 than Ferrari, then how is that going to play out? You know, the team is obviously going to start keeping some things from Lewis because, you know, that's totally natural when a driver, when you know a driver uh, is leaving your team at the end of the year. What happens if, you know, Ferrari uh, are much better than Mercedes in 2024? You know, does that make Lewis feel, you know, on top of the world about his decision? So yeah, all of these questions are going to be answered, but there's no doubt that in terms of Ferrari, their team has got stronger. Whilst Lewis by himself does not make you a championship challenger, Again, drivers were never their issue. They've always had high quality drivers, but clearly Lewis has seen something from Fred Vasseur, something from John Elkan, you know, of course, who, you know, is the big boss at Ferrari. That has made him think that all of these past issues, the reliability, the operational stuff, the car raceability, things like that, it's, it's on a better trajectory and it's gonna be in a better place. And it's finally gonna be in a place where we can finally win championships when I get there in 2025 and for 2026 as well. So yeah, for Ferrari, I honestly think that this is, moves do not get any better than that if you are the Scuderia. I mentioned earlier in the video that when you have a move of this magnitude, which again to me is the biggest driver transfer in Formula One history, it has a domino effect and it has a knock-on effect on pretty much every single team on the grid. Like, this move will have an effect on Haas's lineup potentially, and it could definitely have an effect on Williams' lineup as well. So, uh, potentially even stakes uh, with Valtteri Bottas, you know. There is so many rumors because, of course, the next question is, what about that seat at Mercedes for 2025? I think, first of all, actually, what I will say about that is, the fact that Lewis decided to announce this now and kind of get it out of the way early, you know, a lot of people were shocked about the fact that why didn't Lewis kind of, you know, feel out 2024, see where the car was, see how competitive the W15 and also Mercedes's understanding uh, of the car and kind of of these regulations and then decide. But I think this kind of massive confidence that Lewis, is, uh, that Lewis had of just going, right, I'm committed, I'm going to Ferrari now, regardless of what happens to Mercedes, it's also good for Mercedes. You know, I think it, I think Lewis did the right thing actually by doing this early and kind of telling to Toto Wolff that, you know, I, I know I'm leaving early. I know that perhaps it might look a little bit strange that I'm not even giving you a chance, but it also gives you a chance to sort out your driver lineup. You know, Toto now has an entire year uh, to find someone to... I don't know if replace Lewis Hamilton uh, is even the right word because you can't really replace him. But, you know, obviously find his, you know, find the next uh, successor uh, to Lewis for 2025. And I mean, the number one thing is that there's no doubt that, you know, Toto Wolff is going to have a hell of a lot of people on his phone and, you know, wanting that drive. Do you know what? In fact, I might call up Toto Wolff. I mean, I'd definitely be up for uh, driving for Mercedes uh, in 2025. You know, Aldas Russell for 2025. It has a ring to it, doesn't it? But yeah, even though some of the shine might be, you know, slightly off Mercedes due to the past couple of years, this is still a race winning team. This is still a championship level team with some fantastic people. You know, again, Toto Wolff and James Allison has obviously just extended his contract. So yeah, there is so much about Mercedes. You know, they could come out in 2024 and be championship contenders. Like that wouldn't be shocking. Like this team should be challenging for a championship. And that is why when it comes to, you know, potential drivers wanting to race for them, they are not going to have a problem uh, with finding drivers, that is for sure. However, I think it all depends. That second Mercedes seat for 2025 all depends on George Russell because... The thing about George is that there's no doubt on a talent level, I do think he has the capabilities to be as good uh, as someone like a Charles Leclerc, but last year was a worrying season. When you look on paper, you know, in terms of raw speed, he was pretty close to Lewis. You know, there was nothing. I think they were the closest driver lineup in terms of uh, one lap pace in qualifying. So over one lap and in terms of raw speed, there's no problem with George. But in terms of the races, 
I mean, some of his race pace, some of his mistakes. When you look at the championship at the end of the season, Lewis kind of dominated George. And just remember, you know, Lewis got uh, disqualified and lost the second place in, in the US and still dominated Russell in the championship. And that gap was very worrying because, you know, without Lewis, Mercedes were not going to finish second in the constructors. And so I think it leaves a bit of doubt uh, in the mind of Toto Wolff as to whether is he our world championship caliber driver right now who could win a championship if we gave him the right car? Because if the answer is absolutely yes, and if last year was just an anomaly and he is going to bounce back, then you could easily just bring in a number, you know, a classic number two driver, like maybe bring back Valtteri uh, to partner up against George or get in a Alex Albon, for example, who's obviously a good friend of George Russell, but probably won't be on George's level, you know, at, you know, at their absolute best. But again, would do a really solid number two role uh, and support, you know, in supporting George. So if you're absolutely, you know, if you're absolutely certain that George Russell is that guy and that in the right car, he could challenge the likes of Lewis Hamilton in a Ferrari or Charles Leclerc in a Ferrari or Max Verstappen in a Red Bull, then yeah, you bring in the number two. If you have any doubts outside of that, then you do need to bring up someone or you do need to bring in someone who potentially is going to you know, either push George or win a championship despite him being at the team. I think obviously the likes of Carlos Sainz uh, kind of falls into that category. I think him and George would be very close and that would be a very strong driver lineup. However, the only driver who is absolutely a guarantee world championship caliber driver right now is Fernando Alonso. If they, if Toto Wolff is not sure about George challenging for a championship right now, then Fernando Alonso absolutely should be uh, on, on, on their radar. And I mean, you know, could you imagine Fernando Alonso to Mercedes just add another team to his laundry list of teams uh, that he's raced for in Formula One? That would be absolutely incredible. And I mean, you know, even at 42, and I mean, Lewis is going to be, as I said, 40 years old when he steps into the Ferrari. Even at 42, Fernando Alonso is absolutely at his peak. He is absolutely a championship capable driver right now, able to go up against the likes of Leclerc, Hamilton and Verstappen. And so, yeah, I think it all depends. You know, this this second Mercedes seat for 2025, I think depends more on what George Russell does than what the other options are around him uh, potentially do compared to him. So, yeah, it's going to be very, very another interesting kind of piece to watch uh, for 2024. Of course, um, you know, if George does prove himself and if Mercedes are feeling a little bit risky and do kind of want to go for a massive punt, then, you know, their own junior driver, Kimi Antonelli, you know, I made a video about him very recently. He is a massively exciting driver. And could they do a Hamilton 2007 McLaren, you know, bringing Antonelli, if he absolutely smashes Formula 2, like he has been smashing pretty much every single seater, you know, um, every single seater championship that he's raced in, if he smashes Formula 2 uh, this year, then why not? You know, ultimately, age is just a number. As Fernando Alonso always says, age is just a number in a passport. If you're fast enough, then you're old enough. End of story. That is it. Full stop. So, yeah, Mercedes have so many amazing options. And again, it's just one of the knock-on effects of the biggest driver transfer in Formula 1 history. And so there you go. That is my pretty comprehensive video talking about all of the different storylines uh, that have come from this absolutely incredible Formula 1 move. Again, Lewis to Ferrari in 2025. I can't believe it. Let me know all of your thoughts, as always, in the comments box below about anything that I've talked about. And I hope you have enjoyed this uh, extended uh, look at this absolutely incredible move. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh my God, Lewis to Ferrari in 2025. <laughs> Mental. <laughs>